All right, so here is a pressure volume graph problem. Um, this is all in terms of variables. So we have this gas. So again, for these problems, you want to be uh, thinking about a gas in a cylinder with a movable piston. So this piston can slide up and can slide down. The gas is in here. So uh, we're told that the gas goes from A to B and that's isobaric, it's constant pressure. Then the gas goes from B to C, that's isovolumetric, uh, the volume is constant. And then we're told that uh, this step here from C to A is isothermal. Uh, I'm gonna talk about isothermal uh, later on in this video, but for now, uh, it's really important to note that if C to A is isothermal, that means the temperature at A, uh, which is being defined as T1 in the problem, uh, the temperature at A is T1, uh, that means that point C is also T1, because um, the temperature remains constant from C to A. That's a very important realization for, um, uh, for part A here. All right, A and B. Um, the way we're going to solve question A and question B is with gas law, with the, uh, with the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, uh, because after all, this is a gas in the cylinder. Okay, so um, the first question is, uh, as the gas moves from A to B, calculate the temperature, T2, so there, we're calling the temperature at B, we're referring to that as T2. Uh, what is T2 in terms of T1? Okay, so we write down PV equals NRT. Uh, from A to B, the variables that remain constant are pressure. From A to B, the pressure does not change. Uh, the volume does change, so what I'm doing here is I'm circling the variables that, um, that are constant. N is constant because we have a fixed quantity of gas. Uh, the gas is not leaking, nor is more gas being added. And R is the gas constant. All right, so we've circled the variables that stay constant. So what we do at this point is everything circled goes to one side, everything not circled goes to the other. So you do this algebraically and you get V over T equals to equals NR over P, where NR and P are all constant. So if NR over P is constant and it's equal to V over T, that means that the ratio of V over T must also be constant. So what we can say is the volume at A over the temperature at A is going to equal the volume at B over the temperature at B. And what we're looking for is the temperature at point B. So we do the algebra. Temperature at B equals uh, temperature at A. So I'm just rearranging this algebraically. Volume at B over volume at A. I just did that in my head. Okay, so temperature at A is, we're referring to the temperature at A as T1. So temperature at A is T1. The volume at B is um, right here. The volume at B is V1 over 2. V1 over 2 is the volume at point B. And then the volume at A is V1. Okay, so the V1s cancel and we end up with T1 over 2. Um, the temperature is cut in half, which makes sense because the volume is cut in half. Um, if, this, if this volume here is cut in half and everything else stays constant, then temperature is cut in half. Okay, so the answer here is uh, the temp T2 is equal to T1 over 2. All right, B. Here, let me, we'll erase this. All right, so B, so we're gonna do the same sort of thing, PV equals NRT. So now what we're asked to find is the pressure uh, at the end of this step. So from B up to C, <clears throat> what is 
the pressure uh, at point C. So we found out that T2, this temperature down here at point B, was T1 over 2. And as I said earlier, uh, if C to A is isothermal, that means that A and C are at the same temperature. So A is at T1, meaning that point C is also at T1. We just found out that point B was T1 over 2. So as we go from B up to C, the temperature doubles. We go from T1 over 2 up to T1. So the temperature is doubling. Okay, so starting with PV equals NRT, as we move from B to C, volume stays constant, moles stays constant, R stays constant. So this ends up giving us uh, the ratio of P over T will be constant. So we're going to say the pressure at B, temperature at B, is equal to pressure at C over temperature at C. And what we're solving for is the pressure at C. So the pressure at C is going to equal the pressure at B times temperature at C over temperature at B. So I just rearranged this algebraically. All right, so the pressure at B is referred to as P1. And then the temperature at C is T1. Uh, the temperature at B we know to be T1 over 2. So at this point, the T1s cancel, and we end up with uh, 2P1. So uh, <clears throat> as we move from B to C, the pressure doubles, which again, it's easy to understand if you look up here. Um, if this temperature doubles, which we know it does, we go from T1 over 2 to T1, then the pressure must double because everything else is constant. Okay, third question, part C. We are asked to find, so let me erase this. Oops, um, scoot this over. So we're asked to find um, the network done when it's taken from A to B to C. So the, the College Board does this a lot. They say find the work from A to B to C. And really what they're asking for is the work from A to B. Because from B up to C, the work done is zero. There is no work done from B to C because this piston is not moving. Um, in order for work to be done, um, the piston must move. Or another way to look at it in this work equation, this third equation right here, uh, this is for work done on a gas or by a gas. Uh, from B to C, the change in volume is zero. There is no change in volume, so the work is zero. All right, so really what we're solving for here is the work from A to B. Now on a pressure volume graph, the work done is equal to the area under the curve. Um, and the reason why that works, you know, if you, again, if you look at this third equation, work equals P delta V, the, um, <clears throat> the base, you know, from here to here, uh, the base is the change of volume. You know, as, as the gas goes from A to B, the base is the change of volume, and the height is the pressure. So work equals P delta V, and that's the area under the graph. All right, so the way we calculate part C is we're, we're going to, you know, again, we're finding this area underneath AB. All right, so um, the area underneath AB so um, the base is, is uh, V1 over 2. From V1 over to V1 over 2, that, that's going to be a, a change of volume of V1 over 2, right? That's this right in here. V1 over to V1 over 2 is V1 over 2. And then the height is P1. So this is basically P, and then that's the delta V. P delta V. Uh, so this gives us an answer of P1 V1 over 2, which is the answer. All right, the last question. Which of the following processes results in heat being added to the gas? So we're going to look at each step uh, individually and figure out what's happening to heat. All right, 
And the trickiest is, um, well, the, the most, the most time-consuming part of this is going to be explaining isothermal from C down to A. All right, so let's start with A to B. From A to B, we know that the work is positive. Uh, now, why is the work positive? Because this piston is moving down, and that's work going into the gas. That's considered to be positive gas. So work, so look, if you look over here at this equation, this work is plus. It's a positive work. However, we, we, can, we know that the temperature from A to B is decreasing. Uh, and the reason we know the temperature is decreasing, you can show it with PV equals NRT. Uh, from A to B, pressure is constant, and then NR is constant. So the volume goes down, which means the temperature goes down. So if the temperature is dropping, that means the kinetic energy of the molecules is dropping, which means that the change of internal energy, this is negative. The change of internal energy is negative. Um, so that means that this Q here has to be more negative than the work is positive. This has to be negative because uh, the change of internal energy is negative and the work is positive. So heat must be coming out. More heat is coming out than work is going in. Okay. All right. B up to C. Let me clean this up here. All right. From B up to C, we've already said the work is zero because there's no change of volume. Uh, the temperature is rising from B to C. All right, how do I know the temperature is rising from B to C? PV, well, in fact, earlier we said it doubled, but I'll just show it again. PV equals NRT. Uh, volume is constant. From B up to C, volume stays constant, and NR is constant. So the pressure increases, which means the temperature increases. Uh, the temperature is increasing, which means the kinetic energy is increasing. Up here, this first equation. If the kinetic energy is increasing, then the internal energy is increasing. This work is zero, which tells us that um, you know to get a positive change of internal energy, Q must be positive. This has to be positive. Okay. Oh, and let me put down here. This is negative. I think we lost that. The Q is negative. Here it's positive. All right. So uh, the last step here: C down to A, isothermal. Okay, so a few things about isothermal. Uh, looking at PV equals NRT. So isothermal means temperature is constant. And then again, NR is constant. R is the gas constant, and N is the moles. That's not changing. So uh, NRT is all constant, which means that P times V is constant. Uh, P is on the y-axis. V is on the x-axis. Um, in math class, you learned that x times y, if that equals a constant, then what you get is this hyperbola, like that, which is exactly what we have here. Okay, so that's the first thing. I just want to point out, you know, that's, that's a hyperbola. All right, next thing, which, which is more of what we need to talk about. Um, if temperature is constant, so isothermal means temperature is constant. So looking at our definitions for internal energy. Internal energy is equal to change of kinetic, and it's also equal to heat plus work. So if a process is isothermal, that tells us that the kinetic energy is not changing because kinetic energy is linked to temperature. So this is zero, which means there's no change of internal energy. And if there's no change of internal energy, that means that heat and work are equal and opposite. So temperature is constant, which tells us there's no change of kinetic, which means there's no change of internal energy. If there's no change of internal energy, that means that Q and W must be equal and opposite. If heat goes in, work comes out. If work goes in, then heat comes out. They're equal and opposite. All right, so C to A, the work is negative. Uh, the reason we know that work is negative is because the volume is increasing. Uh, the piston is moving up. If the piston moves up, 
that's considered to be negative work. Work is coming out of the gas. Uh, the process is isothermal, and as we just said, Q and W must be equal and opposite. So if W is negative, Q must be positive. All right, so the, the steps that have work, which of the following processes result in heat being added? Uh, heat is added in BC, we have a positive Q here, and CA. Uh, but for AB, we figured out that heat is removed.